Hey there YouTube, this is Jim and welcome to Bites and Beers. So this is the first video I'm making for this channel and actually the first video I'm making for YouTube at all. And I thought there was no better place to start this channel than doing a let's play on the very first PC game I ever played, which was Sierra's Police Quest 1. So we're gonna hop in the time machine and go back to 1987 and play through the original EGA version of Police Quest 1 in pursuit of the Death Angel. Just a quick note about the music, I am using Scum VM, which has a Roland MT32 emulator. So you may notice that the soundtrack is quite a bit beefier than uh, the PC speaker version, which is what I experienced when I first played it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and roll credits. Ah, this already brings back so many memories. Police quest in pursuit of the Death Angel. Okay, we have Jim Walls, responsible for Police Quest 1 through 3. Greg Rowland, programming. Al Lowe, creator of Leisure Suit Larry, programming. Scott Murphy, co-creator of Space Quest, programming. Ken Williams, the big boss, getting his hands dirty, programming. Mark Crow, Graphics. Jerry Moore on Graphics. Margaret Lowe, presumably related to Al, on the music. Jeff Stevenson, Development System. Chris Iden, Development System. And finally, Bob Heitman, Development System. So this is just gonna loop through, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna pause it quickly because there are some time sensitive events in this game and one of them hits you right in the beginning here. If we do not make it to our briefing in time, it is game over. Uh, so just a quick bit of background. We are going to step into the shoes of patrolman Sonny Bonds and he is a police officer in Lytton, California. Funny note, um, when I played this game as a kid, I pronounced it Lytton and I've gone through my entire life pronouncing it Lytton and I was recently proven wrong by this Sierra TV commercial for Police Quest 2. This is the city. Look, a peaceful, law-abiding community, but not for law. So I stand corrected. Litton it is. I will try and stick to the correct pronunciation throughout the video, but if I do slip up, and say lighten. Please remember it's been uh, decades of that burning in my brain uh, and all I can do is, is try and do better. So um, the town of Lytton, California, it's a, a relatively small town that has been experiencing a bit of a growth spurt and along with that growth has come a spike in crime, especially drug crime. So as we start the game uh, here in the main lobby of the Lytton Police Department, uh, we are getting ready for our first shift. One thing I'm gonna do real quick is just change the speed of the game to fast, um, just to save everybody a little bit of time. It's it's a bit painfully slow playing on normal. We're gonna head into the locker room here and grab our gear for the day. Our gun, of course. The policeman's tool belt. Don't leave home without it. Our ammo. You take a speed loader with six rounds of 357 Magnum hollow point silver jacketed bullets. Funny point, um, I did actually look up silver jacketed bullets because that sounded extremely expensive and impractical. And the only real life examples I could find were all referencing werewolves. So not sure um, why Litton police are issued silver jacketed bullets, but we're just going to roll with it. Let's go ahead and load our gun. You rip out the speed loader and load your weapon. We're going to get our briefcase here, which contains many items you'll need in the field. And then let's open our case and we'll get our notebook. You take the notebook from your briefcase. We'll get the pen, which was a high school graduation gift. And our ticket book. You take your pinch book from your briefcase. Close our case and our locker. And before we head to the briefing, let's just go chat with our fellow officers. 
Can you believe that Morris Fudley? Every day he showers here because he's too cheap to shower at home. Oh, don't knock until you tried it. We're all trying to save money. Say, Sonny, do you know how to tell the difference between an oral and rectal thermometer? By the taste. Ah, little locker room humor there. Well, see you later. I'm late for a date to raise my caffeine level. Boy, what a hangover I have. I should have left the blue room earlier last night. The blue room is a cop bar, which we will see later in the game. And uh, finally, Morris Fudley. Do you know the best thing about this shower, Sonny? It's free. Too bad you have to work, Sonny, says Fudley. I'm 1010. It's beer time for me. You'd better get on your beat before Sergeant Dooley catches you blowing off department time. That is wonderful advice. Let's uh, run over to the briefing and hope that we're not too late. Okay, we made it. Um, I can tell because the newspaper is down there on the table. And if we were late, that newspaper would be gone. So first thing, let's check our pigeonhole. You check your pigeonhole and find a handwritten message. Sonny, how's about an 1198 at Carol's Caffeine Castle later in the shift? Steve. 1198 is a, a break. So yeah, I think a, a coffee break later on sounds like a plan. Uh, since you no longer need the message, you discard it. And let's go see what's going on in the newspaper. You pick up this morning's edition of the Litton Tribune. Okay, our first story, Dope in the City. The city of Lytton, once a beautiful, peaceful, quiet city with few major crime problems, is now experiencing rapid growth and prosperity. But along with growth has come an alarming increase in the crime rate that is threatening the peace of Lytton. Police Sergeant John Dooley states that dangerous drugs are showing up on the streets and in our schools. The homicide rate and prostitution are at a level the city has never seen. The Tribune has learned from a reliable source that a big-time drug dealer with a street name of Death Angel may be responsible for the drug traffic. Okay, so there's a little background on uh, the current state of Lytton. Also on the front page, President Hickel in Smugsville, USA. President Hickel was in Smugsville yesterday evening observing the annual migration of the red-bellied swamp coddlers. The president, who has been a bird lover since childhood, rates the mating dance of the coddler as being quote, as spectacular as the golden crown scum sucker, end quote. The president candidly admitted that he once skipped the Geneva Arms Convention to watch some old coddlers mate. The president says a bill is presently before the Senate proclaiming National Coddler Day. Okay, so that's it for the first and second page. What else do we have here? Escaped. Lytton City Jail reported the escape of a female prison inmate last night. Florine Flustered Flora Paxton flew the coop by hiding beneath a pile of soiled prison laundry in a hand-pushed basket. LPD Officer of the Year nominees, Lytton PD Chief Whipplestick has nominated Sonny Bonds, hey that's us, and Joe Walters for LPD Officer of the Year award due to outstanding effort and commitment in crime prevention. So that kind of sets us up as a, a bit of a rising star in the department. And finally, the last story, Kingdom of Daventry is now under siege by a renegade three-headed dragon. One unidentified gnome stated the kingdom is in a state of emergency. So obviously a reference to the King's Quest series. And Sierra does that quite a bit. They, um, they plug different games throughout their other games. And uh, we'll see that a lot as we progress through various Sierra games. Okay, the briefing is about ready to start. Sonny Bonds, please find your place. Briefing is about to begin. And I like to come over here and just uh, get these little bits of dialogue from our fellow officers as they file into the room. Hey, Sonny, that story in this morning's paper sure made you look good. Man, that aftershave lotion is getting to me, sweet thing. Did you hear the Greasy Spoon quit giving half price meals? That's terrible. Dooley sure has putting on the pressure for ticket activity. That sounds about par for the course. All right, let's go find our place for the briefing before we get in trouble. This is your assigned position for briefings. 
And here's the sergeant. Sergeant John Dooley briefs the 1300 shift, beginning with the latest hot sheet of stolen rides. Welcome back, men, says Sergeant John Dooley, ignoring the single female in the room. I hope you enjoyed the long weekend. Now listen up, he barks. We're looking for a black 1983 Cadillac, license number LOP1238, bin C0345621. Reported stolen last week. Try hard to find it so I can get that Malcolm Washington character off my back for a change. Dooley continues, now hear this. Last night, three teenagers were arrested in three separate arrests, each for drunk driving. Two of the three were in possession of cocaine and all three attend Jefferson High School. That should tell you something, boys and girls. Well, that's it for today. Watch your butts, kids. We don't want old Chief Whipplestick whining about our industrial inju injury stats going up again. Sonny Bonds, your call number will be 8332. Yeah, let's run over so we can get the exit dialogue here. I had two arrests last night. It's a shame both of them wanted to go the hard way. You keep wearing that aftershave lotion and I'm going to jump you. All right, so we got a little low-key sexual harassment here. Very nice. You're going to have to hump to catch me, boy. I wrote so many tickets while you were off duty, I wore down two pencils and ran a pen clear out of ink. Nobody likes a show-off. Better write some tickets if you want to keep Dooley off your back. Alright, so I'm getting the impression that we're expected to write a few tickets on this shift. It sure clears out quick around here. Okay, quick tour of the police station. So we've already seen the doors on the right hand side. The one towards the bottom of the screen leads to the locker room. And the one towards the top of the screen is where we just came from, the briefing room. On the left hand side, that closed door leads to Sergeant Dooley's office. And the open door on the upper left leads to the computer room. Because remember, this was the 1980s. Uh, we did not yet have computers on everyone's desk. Instead, you had a single computer in a room that all of the officers would have to share. And then the barred window on the upper right, that is the evidence window. And we will use all of these locations as we go through the game. So uh, let's go ahead and get on our shift. We're going to take a radio. You pick up a squelchy, noisy, but workable extender. And let's go ahead and grab our patrol keys. You take the patrol car's keys from the keyboard. All right, let's head to the parking lot. This hallway, the open door on the right leads to narcotics and the closed door on the left is Lieutenant Morgan's office. And here are the police cars. This is our trusty steed right here. And per the manual, Correct police procedure is to walk around the car and do an inspection. Having performed the prescribed walk around safety check of your vehicle, you're now ready to hit the streets. If you skip that step, you will have a very short game as the moment you start to drive, your game will be over for not following procedure. Okay. And here we go. Okay, and here we are at the groundbreaking driving interface for Police Quest 1. You can see the police station, the red brick building, and the parking lot of police cars. Uh, we are the one on the upper left. And basically we are going to use the arrow keys to move our little rectangle around and try really hard not to touch any of the curbs or other vehicles because even the slightest brush up against an obstacle will result in us dying in a fiery crash. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, we're just going to patrol the streets of Lytton and look for uh, any crime. Hey, here we go. We got a call. Dispatch squawks. 8332, 8332. Respond to 1183, southwest corner of Fig and Forth. So an 1183 is a motor vehicle accident. So let's head over. Um, we're pretty close, so I'm not going to run lights and sirens. We're right here. There is the accident, that green vehicle. And here we are. Upon your arrival at the scene of the accident, you observe a group of bystanders gawking at a green sedan that attempted to carve its own door in the side of a brick building. Let's radio to dispatch real quick and let them know we're on scene. 
Your key or radio, 8332 at scene of traffic accident. Your radio crackles, 8332, dispatch copies, 1097. Okay, here we are on scene and this doesn't look good. Uh, let's take a look around. Being a highly trained observer, you immediately notice a smashed coupe on the sidewalk and a crowd of rubberneckers milling around nearby. The crowd includes one particularly anxious young man. Um, all right, before we get to the anxious young man, let's go check out the driver here. Look at the car. There's a man slumped over the steering wheel. You take a deep breath, look in the car and see a male slumped motionless over the steering wheel. A closer look reveals a bloody injury to the left side of his head and a gaping hole in his lower right jaw. That's not good. Let's try and help this guy. No pulse, no breathing, no vital signs. There's a bullet hole in the driver's window. This is not your normal everyday traffic accident, in your opinion. This man was murdered. Okay. Let's go talk to our friend over here. An excited young man approaches you. Officer, he says, I saw what happened. I saw everything. I was buying a paper at the newsstand across the street when I heard the scream of tires, he tells you. I look down the street and here comes this car and a light blue late model Cadillac racing down the street side by side. So my first thought with Cadillac is that stolen car they briefed us on, um, but they did say that was a black Cadillac and this one is light blue, but maybe related? When they got closer, I heard a bang. I thought one of them had a blowout. But right after that, this car here lost control and crashed. The light blue caddy just kept on jamming, he finishes breathlessly. Thank you, sir. Uh, got anything else for us? All I know is, says the witness, I think I saw part of his license plate number, L964. Alright, let's radio all this into dispatch. You use your radio to advise dispatch of the apparent homicide. The car radio crackles a response. 1483 32, we copy 187 PC homicide. Be advised, one homicide unit is en route and the coroner's office has been notified. Continue investigation. You notify dispatch of the vehicle information. 1483 we copy 187 PC homicide. Continue investigation. You again notify dispatch of the vehicle information. Third time's the charm. You notify dispatch of the vehicle information. Dispatch, this is 8332. Be advised, description of suspect vehicle is a late model, light blue Cadillac. 1483 we copy light blue Cadillac, partial license L964. Okay, so uh, we have kind of reached the limit of our patrolman responsibilities here. And now we just wait for our supervisor and homicide to show up. Hey, it looks like the car stopped smoking. I guess that's a good sign. All right, here they are. Homicide detective Oscar Hamilton arrives with Sergeant Dooley. Dooley tells you, Bonds, Detective Hamilton will handle the investigation from here. Hit the streets and try and find the rat responsible, says Sergeant Dooley. I'll introduce the witness to Hamilton. Okay, we have our orders. Let's go get back on the streets. Okay, so let's resume our patrol. We're just going to drive around waiting for something to happen. Okay, Steve radios, 8332, this is 8331, time for 1198 at Caffeine Castle. Great, let's go take a coffee break. And there's Carol's Caffeine Castle. You can tell the locations you can visit because they have these driveways. I think there's about five of them in the game. And here we are, Carol's Caffeine Castle next to the fine establishment Wino Willies. 
Oh, let's go get some coffee. Here's our friend Steve. Boy, this weather's been great. All right, looks like Steve's uh, into stupid small talk. Let's look around. This is your favorite coffee shop. Carol, the busy but friendly waitress, makes the strongest coffee in town. There's a menu on the left wall and a telephone on the far wall. The restroom is down the hall from the phone. What's on the menu? You look over Carol's blue plate specials du jour. Filet of hummingbird breast. Pig sty stew. Fried pork rind. Yum. That doesn't sound um, too appetizing, to be honest. Let's look at Steve. Steve looks like he's on a caffeine high. Nice. And I think, um, I think Carol's gonna bring us some coffee here in a second. Here we go. Carol sets your coffee down and says, here you go, big boy, one caffeine IV. All right, let's drink this shit. You slam back the entire mug of Jamaican Java. Your eyeballs roll back in your head. That's what I'm talking about. Ooh. Hear the phone. Carol yells at you from across the room. Officer Bonds, there's a Detective Hamilton on the phone for you. Okay, that's the, uh... The homicide detective who was just at that crash scene. You take the phone and hear, Bonds, this is Detective Hamilton. We identified the 187 victim in the car as Lonnie West, a local small-time drug dealer. Believe it or not, he's the second small-timer to get his ticket punched in the last two weeks. I just wanted you to know about West since you worked the scene. Gotta run, got another call waiting. Don't spend the whole day drinking coffee. Bye. Okay, let's uh, use the restroom while we're here. You are now in the restroom. You whistle a happy tune as you clear your mind. It's not exactly what I would consider a happy tune, but... Okay. Sonny Bonds, Closet Freak. Now, I'm going to... Um, Take a note because we will get a point for this and I'm just going to, you can type in anything in here. I'm just going to type Lonnie West, the name that uh, the de detective gave us. And I think we just hit enter a couple times. Yeah, now we have 49 points. We're making some good progress here. Steve says, well, guess it's time to get back to the business of crime fighting. Indeed, Steve, indeed. All right. Freshly caffeinated. Let's hit the streets again. Okay, and here's where I'm going to stop the first episode so these videos don't get too long. Thank you so much for stopping by my first ever YouTube video. If you made it this far, I really appreciate you watching. Please click the like and subscribe buttons if you want to get notified when I post new videos. And I will be back soon with the continuation of Police Quest 1 in Pursuit of Death Angel.